call, so there might not be anybody even know about it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Less Alex podcast, also known as Sports Card Live, also known as the podcast. I don't know. Um, but today I have on a returning guest, Flipping Steve. Uh, we're going to be talking some sports cards. We're going to be talking sports. Uh, baseball's back. Basketball's still back on its way back. And uh, we're also going to be talking some soccer cards. So it's going to be a fun time. Uh, Steve, how you doing today? Man, I'm doing good. You know, anytime I can talk about cards and uh, the hobby, it's fun. You know, I haven't been on in a couple weeks, so looking forward to coming back. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what's up? Why do I do this? How's it going? How's it going? Yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for listening and for watching. If you are watching this live, I appreciate you. Make sure to hit the like button and, uh, you know, participate in chat. And if you're listening to this after the fact on the podcast or watching it after the fact on YouTube, uh, it was filmed or streamed live in front of a YouTube audience. Um, and if you enjoy the content, make sure to uh, smash that like and that subscribe button over on YouTube as well. I want to give a huge shout out to my newest patron, David. He just became a patron a couple days ago and became a patron at the Hall of Fame level, which is the highest tier on patrons, uh, Patreon. So shout out to him. And yeah, if you enjoy the content that I make and want to help support me as a content creator, head on over to Patreon and just check that out. But yeah, we've got some stuff to talk about today, sports card related and just sports related. Uh, basketball and baseball both returning. Finally, baseball is back. And I hope there's no revisions. I hope they don't go back on it again. But the, the owners have implemented a 60-game <laughs> schedule with no extended playoffs. So only 10 teams like normal. What's up, Ronnie, 2K, Cato, and Ellen Imbros? How's it going, everybody? Thanks for hanging out with us. But yeah, um, what are your initial thoughts on the announcement that was, I think, yesterday? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm like everybody else. I'm ready for them to get started. There's always going to be a little bit of a, you know, I don't want to say reluctancy, whatever the word I'm looking for is, that uh, it may not happen, hopefully. Hopefully it does. They say it's going to, but we've heard yeah. this before. Um, I really think it will happen this time, though. Um, I think it's going to benefit some teams. I think with a shortened season, you're going to see some teams that may not normally make the playoffs that might get in there because it's going to be all about the hot start now. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I really think it's going to affect some teams in certain ways. I don't know if that's something you want to touch on or not, but I think that there's certain players that are going to benefit from it. And um, and teams because the players are going to be benefiting from. Yeah, the definitely. And another thing that I think everybody in almost sports across the board that have been affected, not just baseball, but like should asterisks be in place for this season for the champion? Um, I think I, I, I honestly don't think so, because more so than any other season this season means every single ga game means more than mm -hmm. ever like basically one game means almost four and a half games <laughs> right uh, um, i think everybody has the same shot at winning so i don't think there should be any asterisks everybody's starting off on the same playing field yeah uh they're all they're all playing 60 games it's not like one team gets to play 60 and somebody else has to play 80 you know so yeah they're all under the same rules so i don't think there should be any asterisks either yeah, I, I definitely agree. Yo, shout out to Ellen Ambrose with the $2.99 super chat. Keep up the great content, they say. Appreciate that big time. Holy smokes, appreciate that. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think there should be any asterisk, and that goes especially for the NBA. Like they're basically the NBA is basically playing a full season almost. Yeah. I mean, they're they're what, a handful, maybe a dozen games shy, yeah. if that, but um, no, in, in baseball, and I agree with what you're saying is it definitely, you're going to have to come out of the gate swinging, right? Like these teams that are typically, and players that are cold starters, you're going to have a rough time. You're going to have a rough time. I know the big thing that people were talking about, like coming into, coming into this, uh, you know, season, if you will, was 
oh, well, the, the Nationals wouldn't even have been in the World Series because they had such a poor start last year. Right. But I don't think we can really compare this season to any other season. Uh, this season is its own thing in the context of what's going on in the world right now. <laughs> so I don't know about – I don't know what you're on that, but um, no, I like I said, I think that it's all even. I I think that teams with veteran pitchers are going to benefit here because they're not yeah. going to have as much, um, you know, going into the postseason. You're not going to have guys worn down. I think this favors teams that were already really good, like the Dodgers, guys like Clayton Kershaw, things like that. Uh, you know, these pitchers get pitch counts, and then when late in the season, they start wearing down, and I think this is good. It's, you know, the World Series always favors the teams with the good pitching. I think it's going to be even more so this year. The good pitching teams are, are going to be even stronger, in my opinion, because guys are going to not be as fatigued from 162-game season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, teams with teams with good bullpens, I think, are definitely going to be – favored because you're not going to have that long long <laughs> grind so you're going to have those really good yeah 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 brian i agree it definitely changes how you use your pitchers for sure but i think the teams with the deep bullpens are going to be heavily favored as well uh just because you're not going to have to run down your you know your middle relief guy and your i mean from top to bottom the bullpen is going to be uh pretty huge i think um, but yeah, and it's weird. We were talking about right before we went on is there haven't really been any spikes since the announcement. <laughs> there really haven't oh, yeah. been any spikes for baseball well, since the announcement. Well, you know, and if you look, if you look at the cards, there's a couple players whose prices were really hinging around some narratives this year that aren't going to happen. You know, Acuna's chase for 40, 40, it's not yeah. going to happen. So, right. you know, that narrative has gone. Petey Alonzo going back to back 50, 50 home run seasons to start his career. That, that's gone. There are some players I think that can benefit. I think somebody who's normally a really hot starter and kind of slows off towards the end of the season is, is like, like a Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper always starts out on fire. And then after the all-star break, he, he, I don't know what happens. He, he, he cools off, you know, especially yeah. from a consistency and average standpoint. I think that he's the type of player in a 60 season game is going to kill it you know you could see him bat 300 in a 60 season game and um you know normally he's around that 250 260 mark and he's going to hit for power um yelich was a hot yeah and yelich was a hot starter last year although i remember the season before that he didn't really turn it up until after the all-star break so yeah (sighs) and in the in that same vein uh a guy on on the cardinals paul goldschmidt is oh, yeah. notoriously a late starter. Yes, he was um, bad late last year. Yeah, he he. I mean, even the, the what was it? 2018, I think, was his last year in uh, in Arizona, and he his that was like his worst season. And he it was because his first half was just god awful, mm-hmm. and then he yeah. hit. He was a monster in the the second half, and really, you know, was able to put up, uh, you know. His kind of numbers, gold. Yeah, his numbers, his numbers. end line looked respectable, but if you looked at it over yeah. consistency, um, I play in a fantasy baseball league that's a weekly league, so it's not a rotisserie league. So you need your guys to be consistent. Right. And I had Paul Goldschmidt, so I know what that was all yeah, about. He was ice cold, yeah. and then at the end of the year, he was he was money for me, but it was already kind of late because you know he was my big big money guy. So yeah, yeah my season was already gone. <laughs> Yeah, man. So I think guys, I think you, you know, you nailed it on the head. Guys that typically do have hot starts are definitely going to be way more valuable. And I posted uh, E-Man's, E-Man's comment here, a couple of blown saves and you missed the playoffs. Definitely. That's what I'm saying is like the, 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 the closers and really all the bullpen is just definitely going to be way more uh, critical this season. I think what's up central Valley cards. How's it going? Thanks for hanging out. First catch. How are you doing? Owen, mass collector. How's it going, everybody? Um, maybe Judge can finish a whole season this year. <laughs> oh man, that's a dagger. Yeah, I, I agree. That's that's actually a question I get a lot. I don't know about you, but like what Yankees, you know, obviously the Yankees are basically the most popular team in North American sports, damn near. And right. uh, 
the, the people ask me what Yankees to go after. And when I don't say Aaron judge, they're like, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> just cause he's injured all the time. Like, honestly, he's a great player. And I, I like Aaron judge. I think he's his following. Obviously they got the whole judge section. <laughs> Whenever he uh, comes up to the plate, the all rise thing, the, the bleacher, uh, the folks in the bleachers are all wearing like, looking like judges and stuff, which is awesome. <laughs> That's like something really cool that uh, you can get behind a player. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> kind of the playoff mass collectors <laughs> joke. I think it, there's something to be said, though, that he's going to have an opportunity to uh, actually finish the season this year. Well, what about uh, the Yankees? The Yankees whole entire lineup in general, have they all been healthy at once? I mean, Stanton <laughs> hasn't played hardly. Um yeah. Uh, Gregor Torres. I mean, have all those guys really been in the lineup all at one time? I really don't know if they have. I, last season, I think they were at least. I don't know. I don't want to say for certain, but I know they were in like at least the top ten in most injuries last year. So yeah, they were hurt, and still were good. Yeah, I mean, they were still were beasts. Off. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ellen Imbo was Glaber. I think yeah, Glaber in terms of a uh, basically any any. Yankee is going to have just intrinsic value just because they're a Yankee. Just because they're <laughs> um, but no, Glaber would for sure be the card that I've been picking up the in terms of Yankees. That is the that is the guy I've been going after more so than anybody See, else. I'm uh, biased against against Glaber. If he didn't play the Orioles so many times, <laughs> his stats would not be so inflated. <laughs> I it think he hit thirteen. Big. He might have hit thirteen of his home runs off the Orioles last year. Yeah, it was like it was like fourteen or fifteen or something. Off the, just the Orioles. Yeah, like, come on, give me a break. That line, would, his home runs would have been like halved had he not played yeah. a game against the Orioles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's dude, great. I'm on my Orioles. Man, did yeah he? he uh, no, I'm not a Yankees fan. Uh, longevity is key to any hall. Uh, what do you mean there by that, Brian? Um, Maybe a Hall of Fame or something? Oh, sure. You know, I, I guess longevity, our longevity of your career, being consistent over a long period. Oh, sure, sure. Everybody's complaining about the Wi-Fi, but I swear to God, I'm hardwired in. I'm hardwired in. There's no Wi-Fi to be uh to be uh had about it. It's Spectrum. Blame Spectrum, y'all. Um, but moving on, I think uh baseball, obviously, I'm would be I mean, I'd be buying at this point now that we know there's gonna be a season. If there's guys that you want to uh flip or you guys feel interested in um i'd be buying what about you yeah like i said when before we went on um i haven't noticed much change in the market today and which is surprising because the way the market moves today you know it, it's crazy some of these players haven't started been picking up already but if you wait till opening day and Acuna comes out and hits two homers or even uh bellinger comes out and hits a couple homers which can easily be done it's too. It's already too late. You know, it's already too late. If somebody hits two home runs opening day, it's too late. Everybody's going to be on their cards so fast. Oh yeah. So it's all about beating them to the punch. You just got to make the right decisions, and you can make the right decisions as long as you pick guys that you can't go wrong with. They don't necessarily have to be instant flips, but as right. long as they have that, you know, a safe floor to them, they can always be a safe investment uh, yeah. with with high upside. And that's something that I think separates baseball more so than any other sport in the hobby. And of course, let me know your thoughts on this, but in my opinion, baseball is the one sport where I am almost exclusively looking long-term or at least like several months out. I'm mm -hmm. almost never really looking to get a card at this price this week and then like flip it. Cause you can do that in, right. in basketball, especially with the way basketball markets been, yeah. you can do that a lot pretty easily. But in baseball, I think it, baseball's like always been the constant in terms of just sports card collecting. Mm -hmm. Baseball's always been there, so that is the it's the one sport where I have most of my money in. First off, but also um, invest in the most for long term. 
Yeah. So, uh, also with me with baseball, yeah, I don't do much prospecting in baseball. I don't follow a lot of the minor leagues and things like that. So I don't know a lot of these guys, especially the guys that are in this Bowman product. Other than you know, the, you got the names Dominguez and and yeah. Witt, you know the guys that everybody talks about. But I don't know any of the other guys, so I wouldn't even know who to put my money into. That's just right. me because the baseball market is not something. It, like I said, that I prospect. I do like players that have been around for a while that I think I can stash long term. You know, we've been doing it with pool holes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love Miguel Cabrera prices right now. His stuff is is low. His Definitely. tops chrome traded graded nines are barely over a hundred bucks. And I'm like, that's, he's a future hall of famer. He's going to have 500 home runs, 3000 hits. I mean, yeah. even it, his, it, even his, uh, what was it? The, the PSA tens are, aren't too terribly expensive. Yeah. The tens aren't too high. And when I, you, the I tens mean, aren't too high, you know, and I just think those nines are a bargain. Yeah. I just mean in terms of the like context of players at his level, like he's for sure he could retire tomorrow and he's walking mm -hmm. into the hall of fame. So, right. Yeah. Like right now he's the kind of a guy that's a safe buy. He's got a concrete legacy. You can buy him right now and you're not going to lose, but you do have room to gain. So that's what, you know, low risk, high reward, really zero risk on a player like that, in my opinion. Oh yeah. Like I said, with him and pool house, really the only thing I think that could ever hurt the price of their cards is like a steroid allegation yeah. or something yeah, like that. that. Would be or some crazy, uh, off the field incident where they get into legal trouble or something, but yeah, um, I definitely think that uh, they're they're like super duper. And w both of us have been talking about pools for months and months. Mm -hmm. I mean, even before you started making videos, we were talk we were chatting about it on yeah uh, on, in the DMs. But <laughs> um, yeah, man, I just think right now for baseball buy the players you're interested in that you think are going to be profitable, buy them right now. Cause they'll literally, um, as long as you're picking correctly, <laughs> now's the time to buy. If I had to pick somebody that was in their prime or definitely coming into their prime right now that I wasn't prospecting, yeah. um, it would be Cody Bellinger to me, Cody yeah. Bellinger. He's almost, I don't want to say I can't miss. Nobody's a can't miss. You right. never know what can happen. But he's proven what he can do. Like, he hits the long ball. Like, his first year, he hit a ton of home runs, but his average was down. And then last year, he hit for average and home runs and, or power and RBIs. And he's in a great market. The team got better. Um, and I, I, I just think he's almost a can't miss. Like, Yelich is a great player and a great talent, but I feel like he's dinged up a lot. Uh, he will go long periods of time where he's on a tear, and then he'll sit three or four games with, like, back spasms or something. Yeah. And I love Yelich. I've loved him since he was on the Marlins. I used to buy his, uh, his jerseys and stuff. Um, but Bellinger, if I had to pick a young guy right now that wasn't like a rookie, I, I just think Bellinger is the guy. Oh, yeah. That's for me, though. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Um, you know, it's like a thing on the channel is like uh, a thing that I'm kind of like coining is like belly bombs. Like he, yeah. he's a stud, man. He's already won an MVP, too. You could you could mm -hmm. argue he's the, I think you could argue the that he's the best NL player not named Mookie Betts, um, and I think he's one of the best left-handed hitters in the game for sure. Yeah, um, but I, I'm I'm excited about him. I, I definitely agree. There's I, I can never remember the name of the of one of one of my subscribers, but he always comments. He's been commenting on like all my baseball videos recently. Is Bellinger's the best buy? In, in baseball right now. And I tend yeah, to agree because um, he's really got some bargains out there. You know, you know, yeah. what, you know what they are. You've, we've talked about them, but the tops, the up tops update, everybody chases and that, yeah, that's fine. Everybody can chase those, those cards because there's some cards that everybody's overlooking that are great cards of Bell of Bellinger in, in particular. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Belly's great. Um, and I've been, <laughs> I follow, or I'm subscribed to the Dodgers on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a great like behind the scenes, like videos that they do. And it just like, it's a great way. And it's to like learn the players, how they act kind of off the field. And it, he, he gets me excited for the game. And he, and that's something that, you know, I preach a lot is like, how much do you care about the person rather than the player? Cause mm -hmm. I think that there is value in, if the person is like exciting 
and mm -hmm. a good person or, you know, obviously we'd never yeah. really know, but seemingly he's, he seems like a guy that can connect with fans in that if MLB wanted to take him and say, Hey, you're the guy now. And they wanted to market him. Yeah. Marketable marketability. Yeah. That's key. That's real key. Um, yeah. There's guys even in other sports like basketball that their marketability just kills them. Like they're great players. And they're yeah. just a little slightly polarizing. Um, and yeah, in baseball, you know, yeah, some I mean, people benefit from it though. I, I think, I think Bryce Harper is somebody who's got an explosive personality, but I think yeah. he benefits from it. Like, I don't think it's as polarizing as it may seem to some. I think he actually, I think that stigmatism that he has, uh, actually, uh, especially where he's at in Philly, that's perfect. <laughs> you oh, know, yeah, that's what, that's I, what they want. I'm sure, yeah. you know, before he was a Philly. I'm sure the Philly fans absolutely hated him. And oh. Now that he is a Philly, I'm sure they are just couldn't be happy. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm about. I'm only. I'm only about an hour from Philly, so <laughs> I live right in between DC, Baltimore, and Philly, like three. So I, it's hard for me to pick my home team. Um, but yeah, I know about the na and the Nationals. So you got the Nationals, the Orioles, and the Phillies all right here within an hour and a half of me, no matter from whatever direction I drive. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, around here are nuts. <laughs> oh, I bet. Um, yeah. I don't know. I like, I, I really like uh, Harper. Um, but yeah, we got a couple people saying Bellinger's a lock. Yeah, definitely. Definitely agree with that. Yeah, that's true. Mass collector. Um, the fact that Yelich is in a small market, you know, the Brewers don't really have a you know, they're definitely not the Dodgers or the Yankees or the Red Sox or anything. So I definitely agree with that. Um, if I if I was put if I was to either pick between Bellinger and Yelich, um, I would definitely <laughs> pick Bellinger. Um, Jan Minkata, yeah, Central Valley. I've talked about Yon Mikata a little bit. I like him, but I, I think that the White Sox have to make a deep playoff run before really any of their cards, any of their players, really their cards start to pop off. Obviously, Luis Roberts' cards are pretty expensive, but I think mostly that's because of the rarity and the scarcity, and no one really knows what is going to be his true rookie card yet. Right. Obviously, that opening day one is like 60 bucks last time I checked, which is incredible. It's a short print though. So that does matter obviously, but I can't, I can't bring myself to spend that money on, on an opening day card. I know it's a short print, but, and I definitely don't want to buy opening day just to try and hit, uh, or Louis, cause people have asked me why, why don't you ever open opening day? It's really easy to get a hold of. It's like, well, it's kind of why. <laughs> Here's my thing on the guys like uh, Luis Robert and Eloy Jimenez. Yeah, is yeah. that uh, is that um, and I'm I'm not I don't want to try to uh, make anybody angry or anything, but who is Chicago's team? I mean, it, it, when I think of Chicago, I think of the Cubs. Honestly, yeah. Um, that's not a knock on the White Sox. That's just it. I mean, if you were to probably take a vote, you know, the general the general baseball fan who is Chicago's team. And I'm sure you're going to get a majority answer of the Cubs. So it's kind of tough there because the White Sox haven't done much. So, you know, yeah. the Cubs are historic, you know, so it's like, you know, they, one market cancels each other out. My like, same with me with the Orioles, we were huge and we lost half of our market when the nationals came into Washington and the DCs yeah. are so close. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely something to consider too. Obviously though, the other than the most recent Cubs, uh, you know, home or uh, world series push, I think in the last several decades, historically the, the White Sox have been the better team. I mean, they won a world series and was it 2008 maybe ish? I don't know, but yeah. yeah. It's it's crazy though, but obviously the Cubs are the Cubs for a reason. Yeah, whenever you hear anything mainstream about Chicago, whether it's a TV show or anything, it's always the Cubs for some reason. When people yeah. talk about Chicago, you could be watching the Cooking Network, and if they talk about Chicago pizza, they talk about the Cubs. <laughs> right? You know, they don't talk <laughs> about the White Sox. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
so Central Valley card says Lindor. Fran- Fran- Francesco Lindor is undervalued. I definitely agree with that. He's on a contract year this year. Um, it could be, honestly, if I were him, I might not want to play this year because I'm on a contract <laughs> year and I don't want to get the virus and risk my earning potential. But I think even if he has a average year by his standards, he's going to be a potential $300 million player uh, going into the next off season, 20, 2021. So I definitely think once that happens, his hype could be real though. One thing about Lindor is I, I personally think he might resign with Cleveland because he absolutely loves that city. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, who knows you throw a $300 million check in front of somebody. <laughs> they, they might be swayed to leave their home, their quote hometown. But, uh, I mean, think if he signed with a big market, like if he signed with the the Yankees or the Red Sox or the Dodgers or like his no Yankees or Red Sox, man, we don't need him in the um, AL East. We don't need him <laughs> on another team. Um, well, could, could you imagine if he signed with a big a big market? Oh, man, team? yeah, I well, yeah, I could. <laughs> I I for sure could, but I mean, for value. Um, but I, I like Cleveland has a good team. I think. I mean, yeah, they do. Yeah, I, I think that they have a you know some pieces in place, even pitching, pitching and hitting. I mean, if he wanted out of there for more money, then yeah. But I mean, if if he's looking to get out of there because he doesn't think they're going to be competitive, then I don't, I, you know, I don't think that that would be the case. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. You can get his PSA tens, um, the no sparkle under the glove. So it's a weird thing. Here, I'll share the screen here. Um, this one right here, no sparkle PSA 10 for 200. Um, you, you can find the hitting one for 300, but I definitely think they're, they're, they're undervalued. He's such a good player. He's a great defensive player. And I mean, his offensive stats don't, don't lie. <laughs> right. So, but Mark Grace uh was the Cubs best player for a year. He should make the Hall of Fame. I remember Mark Grace. Yeah, He's Mark Grace was great. I remember a lot of that team. I actually liked the Cubs a little bit back then. I always had a National League team because I'm an Orioles fan, but there was always a National League team that I liked. And I always had to have a team in my back pocket for when the sure. Orioles were stinking it up. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I like the I like the Indians and the AL. Um the Rays have a lot of exciting young players too. Although they always oh, yeah. have a lot of exciting young players, it seems. Yeah, they could. I could. I could. You know what? If, if the if the Rays won the American League East this year, I would not be surprised one bit. Yeah. Oh my God. I, they, I mean, I know the Red Sox and I, and I know the Yankees are in that division, but it. I honestly could sit here and tell you, if they won the East, I would be like, hey, I'm not surprised. Well, didn't they won like 95? Games last year, right? Yeah, they have great pitching. They have good young hitting. I mean, they lost uh, was it Glass now uh, to injury last year, and he was pitching Cy Young caliber pitching, yeah. and he'll be back this year. You know, Snell is coming off Cy Young from two seasons ago. Yeah. It's like uh, they have Charlie Morton. When he came over from the Astros, and I thought you know he might struggle, but he didn't. He was he was still a beast. They has got a good pitching staff. Their hitting is good. They play good fundam- fundamental baseball, and they just beat you. Yeah, no, for sure. And they they made the playoffs last year. They made the wild card game, um, and it was them and the A's in that wi- wild card game. I, I don't remember who won. I th- think mm. I don't want to be wrong, but I think it was the A's that won that that one game yeah. playoff. Chad, if you know, let us know. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure either. Um, but I, I did. I, I watched part of that game not too long ago. And then it just got too late, so I turned it off and went to bed. But <laughs> um, no, I like the Rays. I think uh, Austin Meadows is a guy that I'm a big fan of, in terms of his the price of his cards are dirt cheap. They have raised yeah. a little bit over the last couple months, but you can definitely find some steals out yeah, there. Yeah, you love the risk reward on him. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, the risk reward on him is he's one of the better ones out there. Actually, he hasn't caught any kind of wave yet, and. Uh, you know, yeah. they're so low right now that really if you buy them now, you really can't hurt yourself. Yeah, let's take a look here real quick. 
bring it up on screen, but yeah, no, he's a guy that I've been <laughs> buying for a while. I've got, I, I think I have enough. Like, I think I have, <laughs> who knows? I might, I got one of the pink, uh, pink refractors. Yeah. It's, it's PSA 10. It looks good. I have a tops flagship gold, but it's not the, uh, it's not the horizontal Tampa Bay Jersey. It's the pirates. Oh, it's the pro debut one. Yeah. It's the pro debut. I, I even like this one. The heritage. I like heritage. Oh, I love heritage. It's, heritage. It's, yeah. They're like the best bargains out there, man. Everybody loves flagship, but heritage, man, it's a good card. The pop reports are low. You know, I just like here. I like heritage. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I and mean, I, I, if, if you've been a fan of the, channel for a while y'all know that i love classic looking cards um but yeah i mean these are so cheap there's heritage are, man there's heritage are like 11 50 yeah you can get one for 12 bucks so about 16 dollars out the door for a psa 10 like any time that i feel like you can, with me my rule of thumb is if i feel like i can get four to five heritage heritages for the price of the top flagship i buy that i buy the stack of heritage yeah for me as an investor, um, because you have you have the potential of those lower end cards doubling in price as far as, and then yeah. the higher end cards don't tend to uh, snowball as fast. They just they get one little increase, you know, maybe, you know, if it's a forty dollar card, it might shoot up to sixty where as a twenty dollar card might shoot up to forty. So, you know, that percentage yeah. return when you buy more to me, it just is a better investment. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Those. Five to ten dollar, fifteen dollar cards definitely can double overnight. It seems where, yeah, the higher end stuff will go up and probably be long term better in terms of like total dollar amount that you can mm -hmm. make. But yeah, in terms of percentage wise, going with the cheaper stuff is it's always good. Um, saw somebody no, so Card Investor twenty twenty. I haven't got the tops T two oh six yet. Um, I got the, I got the, um, what was it? The project 2020 real late as well. So I, I think that tops is having a backlog of stuff. So I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, Meadows is look at that slash line, 364, 588 and 922 OPS. It's crazy. Very good. I'm a big fan of Meadows. Back to that T206, uh, the first series, uh, that maybe should have shipped by now, right? Man, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're selling the second series now, and they were only supposed to be on sale for maybe 28 days, I 28 think. 28 days, yeah. Yeah, I haven't got it yet. So I, I picked up a couple packs of the Series 1 and the Series 2. I, I should be expecting the Series 1 sometime, but the Series 2 just went on sale, not you know maybe a week. Yeah, sure. Javi Baez, Javi Baez, from what I saw, is pretty underpriced. Um, personally, though, I so I always get asked why people or why by people why I don't talk about a lot of Cardinals players. <laughs> um, and it's because, and you and I were talking about this a little bit today. It's because I, I. I, that's my team. That's my favorite team. And I don't want to get so attached to the cards where when it comes time to sell uh, that I'm going to be like attached to them. So <laughs> that's why I don't talk about Cardinals. And then on the flip side of that, I'm not a Cubs fan. I, I do not like the Cubs. I don't want to own their cards. I mean, even if it's a good investment, I still just, it, it's easy for me because I'm an Orioles fan. So, you know, i still have to buy Cal Ripken if I want somebody good. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's that's the one project 2020 that I'm buying, but that's for PC. So you know, we got you got Ruskin. To get all the Ripkins to have them. You got Adley. Uh, yeah, up. I guess so. But you know, I remember when we drafted Matt Weeters. Yeah, now he's a Cardinal. <laughs> and he had uh, he had really high ups. You know, they were high, super high on him. First round pick oh, yeah. catcher. I remember? And he he was a great catcher. Don't get me wrong. He just never really hit like I thought he was going to hit. Yeah, it's it's funny too because now he's he's a backup to uh, <laughs> he's a backup to Yachty now. Yeah, well, he's so. a great catcher. He calls a great game, and oh, he's yeah. very good defensively. But you know, so he'll always have a job. 
Yeah, no, he's he's great. I he's a good clubhouse guy too. I really like him. Um, Tops is. What's up, Sean? How's it going? What's Trey up, man? Mancini, yeah, yeah, Central Valley. I I uh, I like Trey Mancini, but he just uh, announced that he has uh, cancer, right? Oh, so, I missed that. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, that's kind of why I've been not talking about his cards. Oh um, uh, yeah, I haven't heard that, but yeah, I like Trey Mancini too. It's just he, I need a little bit of consistency. I mean, it, the, the Orioles are just a bad market. I mean, if you want to collect him for PC, yeah, he's good because he's a good Oriole. But if you're buying him to resell him, you better hope for a trade. Yeah, he, he could flourish could. on it. He could he could kill it on another team though. I could see that happening. Yeah, so I found I found the article here. So, but yeah, I mean, I hope obviously he makes a full recovery. He's a great player. Um, yeah. Tops Chrome Acuna is still a buy. I would, Matt, I would have to take a look at the price. I, I think, I think Acuna is a very good player. I think he's a generational talent. They're, they're under a hundred bucks. I know that. Cause I was looking at him. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of yeah. bought all my Acuna's uh, around February. So I haven't really looked at, it's like, if I'm not looking into buying them, I kind of out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. Yeah. Like, Hey, you know, like I have Acuna's. I actually sold some, and you know I yeah. didn't want to because I didn't want to because I, I mean I made profit on them, but I had so much assets tied up into them that when the COVID shut down baseball, it was like I got to free up some assets for something that I can continuously have it going in and out. You know, Acuna became a long term hold. It felt like, yeah. and it wasn't my intention. So I had to free up some assets by selling some Acuna's. I made money off of them, so I'm not gonna. Right. <laughs> you know, bellyache over it, but you know, I don't think I'm buying anymore. Yeah. Not I, that I don't think he's not going to be good. He's going to be, I think he's going to be great. I just don't buy it anymore for myself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Matt, I think to answer your question, I think he's a good buy pretty much now till whenever, basically, because I think obviously anything could happen. He could get injured and never play a game, but if you're assuming he's going to have a nice, long, healthy career, uh, he's going to be a very good Hall of Fame caliber player. Um, There's a card of Acuna that I love that has a good price on it, and that's the Topps Archives. I mean, if you weren't looking to buy an Acuna and you maybe don't want to necessarily go deep into your pocket, uh, look at the Topps Archives on the PSA 10s. They may be up around the $70 mark now, but I remember when they were around 40 But it's a really good-looking card. I like the card itself. Um and there's not a lot of them in population, but you can find them. I think it's a great yeah, I'll bring it up. Is this the one you're talking about? Yeah, that one right there. That's a good looking card. Man, I, I'm a sucker for these classic looking like 90s and just anything old school looking. Yeah, I like. Uh, yeah, that's a good looking card. I think I might have one in here somewhere. When we talk basketball. <laughs> sure. Yeah, there's one. You can see it. Lights on it. Yep. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, we can go into whatever. We can go into some yeah. basketball. Yeah, we can talk some basketball. Just finishing up. Uh, Muncie, Muncie and Turner investable. I think so. The pro. My big issue with investing in Dodgers right now is there are so many good Dodgers that kind Monsi and Turner specifically get overlooked. Yeah. Like you got you got bets. You got uh Gavin Lux who's like hobby hobby wise has probably been blowing up the most. Um and then obviously Bellinger bets, Kershaw, I've been talking about a lot the last month or so. Um I I think he's a lock for the Hall of Fame and it, mm -hmm. God forbid he wins a world if if they win the World Series this season I mean, all bets are off. And especially if he has like two wins in the World Series and can finally put that whole choke artist in the playoffs to bed. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, real quick for me on Justin Turner. Um, with Justin Turner, he's the type of player that he's a, he's a great ball player. And, you know, yeah. sometimes that gets mixed up with a great uh, or a good investment because 
He is a hard-nosed player. He's a journeyman. He hustles. He's gritty. You know, just a hard-working player. But he's the type of player that if you're a Dodgers fan, you're going to love him and you're going to appreciate him. He's going to be your guy. But if you're a general investor, he's going to be the kind of player that you kind of shy away from just because he doesn't blow up the stat sheets. Yeah. But his value, you can't measure his value with stats, basically. Right. Yeah. Um, Ellen Ambrose, thank you for that super chat. 199 super chat. What what you guys what you guys buying for any sport right now? I think this is a good segue to get into basketball. Um, what are you buying in basketball right now? Man, you know, my playoff, I I I, I did a um a list of players that I was buying yeah, for the same. playoffs. And those guys have blown up. I'm, I haven't, I'm done buying them because now I yeah. can't buy them anymore. You know, I was in on uh, Pascal Siakam, but I was in on him really early. I was in on Jalen Brown really early. And I was in on Kyle Kuzma really early. That's three guys that I, that was the three guys that I actually had in my video and Pelicans. I said Pel Pelicans in general, other than Zion. And yeah, I, same. and I bought some uh, Brandon Ingrams. So, and all those guys have blown up, you know, over the past week and a half or two weeks that I first said, pick those guys up. And um, so now I, I can't buy them either. I really am looking for somebody to buy, but there comes a point when there's just nobody to buy. I mean, you start, yeah, right? you just start looking for somebody because you're desperate to find that next big hit and the next big hit isn't necessarily there. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I was, I was in the same boat, Kyle Kuzma. Um, I think he's he he's a good buy. His optics are still pretty cheap. If you guys are looking for uh, cheaper options, obviously, you know, if you guys are here, you probably know my channel is. I'm definitely not into the PSA ten silver prisms. Like that's definitely <laughs> a bit out of my range. But I like the hollow optics. I think that you can still find um, even Ingram, and his prices have been going kind of crazy right now. He's a guy that. He, he was in the chamber for a video, but his prices have just kind of gotten yeah. crazy here recently. His stuff. But uh, um, yeah. him, Kuzma, Lonzo. Lonzo's a guy that I've been buying recently. I, um, I tell you, Ingram Ingram spiked so quick. I picked up two select silvers for 125 bucks each. They were in the PSA 10s. And a week later, I sold one for 325 I'd never intended on selling them that early, but when I saw them going that high a week after I grabbed two of them, it was like, it's already time to sell. The playoffs haven't even started. You know, what if they don't get that eighth seed and the Pelicans are left out? So it, it's crazy. The whole market's crazy. It's so hard. As soon as somebody's mentioned, and I see yeah, a comment it, here talking about Devin Booker. I mean, as soon as yeah, somebody's brought up, it's like. It's crazy to me crazy. how much. Uh, well, obviously, Gary V impacts the market. And whether you love Gary V or you hate Gary V, I like Gary V. I think, you know, it, anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to get into a deep dive on that. But whether you love him or hate him, you have to respect the fact that his what he talks about is going to affect the market, period. Whether you like it or not, it's going to affect the market. And Devin Booker is a perfect example of that. They went, mm -hmm. I think the PSA 10s went from 400 to like 800. The PSA 10 silver prisms went doubled in overnight because Gary V posted that picture on Instagram. Oh, that was like the base. That wasn't even the, yeah, that was oh the my base. God. Okay. Well, that was see. the base. Uh, and they went from actually, they went from like 300. I had some on my watch list like two weeks ago. And, um, you know, I was just looking at prices of what they were ending at. I didn't know if I intended on buying any or not. I was thinking he might be a guy that might get traded. Yeah. And then they just on my watch list, they started going crazy in prices. And I'm like, why are these going up so fast? And then I realized that Gary V effect. <laughs> Gary V had pumped them. But there's a like there's like a question, and this is what I say to myself. Those his prisms are going for like eight hundred bucks. I've seen one sell that high. Now that was a prop steam, that might be an outlier. Right. But um they're going for over six hundred and consistently. So uh, this this is what I want to ask. You know, this is what I would ask the general investor or collector, because this is what I asked myself. Do you think that Booker is the same player as Luca? Do you think he'll have the same career as Luca? Do you think he'll win as many championships as Luca? Do you think it's as good as Luca is right now? Now, I'm not saying Booker's not a great player, but if you answered no to all those questions, then why are you spending 600 bucks on a Devin Booker when you could spend 600 bucks on a Luca? 
it just yeah. doesn't make any sense to me. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely agree. Um, thoughts on Brandon Clark and Kevin Porter Jr. Kevin Porter Jr. is a guy that I actually talked about in a, got several videos of mine. Um, same with Michael Porter Jr. Um, obviously, Kevin Porter Jr. is on the Cavs, and they're nowhere near making the playoffs. Um, what about Brandon Clark for you? I haven't really done much research on Brandon Clark, so I can't really speak to that too much. Yeah, um, I haven't either. Some of these, um, some of these other guys, like uh, Brandon Clark, Kevin Porter, who's in, uh, some other guys. Um, Poole, is it Jordan Poole or something? Poole is on, yeah. on the Warriors. They're just some young guys. <laughs> You know, at this point, I think people are just looking for people to buy it because not everybody in a rookie class is going to be successful. It just doesn't work like that. Like you know, 95% I know this, of the players that are drafted you know, are out of the I knew this rookie year. class was deep, and I know Zion and Ja and even R.J. Barrett and Kobe White, Tyler here, these guys are already expensive, so I know people are looking for the next bargain. That doesn't mean that <laughs> these guys are good buys. Like, just, you know, if you can buy somebody cheap, yeah, it's low risk, but you could be stuck with those cards in a shoebox for the rest of your life too. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. I do like, and I, I've talked about this, especially Michael Porter Jr. I actually like him a lot. Yeah. Um, just because he does shoot the three so well, and it seems like we might be getting a four-point line. Might be a thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. They've actually talked about it. Some teams at their practice facilities actually already have four point lines on their practice uh, courts. So it might be a thing. And if that is the case, then could you imagine, you know, guys like Damian Lillard, guys like Michael Porter Jr., Steph Curry, mm -hmm. all those sniper three point guys, shoot, Kyle Corver, J.R. Smith, like <laughs> how, how much their stock increases. Also, J.R. Smith going to be signing with the Los Angeles uh, Angels, Los Angeles Lakers. So that's going to be crazy. Going back, joining up with LeBron. I think people are looking to buy. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. People are always looking for that next big thing. And to your point, I think sometimes there's just you kind of scraping the bottom of the bail. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I do like – I like Michael Porter also I because he's in a good situation. You know, he's on a good team. I think Denver's like third in the West. They they can make a real, you know, they can make a run because they have some good players. Um, but you know, Kevin Porter is done for the year. So if I was to have to go with one of those two guys, it would definitely be Michael Porter, even in the long term, just because I don't know what the future holds for Cleveland. Yeah. Um, and the and Denver's just got a solid team. And teams like the Lakers are getting older. There has somebody is going to – there's going to be a next big team in the West. It, it could be this year. You never know with this layoff. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. But, um, you know, Denver is one of those teams that's third in the West right now. You know, if LeBron retires, do they become second or first in the West? You, you don't know. Um, same with yeah. the Mavericks. You know, they're, make, they're, they're getting better. You know Cuban's going to spend money on that team. Yeah. Uh, Porz a healthy Porzingis – that's a dangerous team. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not even going to preach Luca because everybody does. Uh, but, um, you know, I don't think the Mavericks are there yet, but right. I, I actually like Denver. I like Michael Porter jr. There, you know, to be a good shooter, they need a outside shooter like that. Yeah. And Jokic, I mean, that team's definitely like good, right? Like, yeah. Um, but, and it's, it'll be interesting to see, how put how teams come back from the layoff too because even though the lakers you know the lakers and the uh the bucks were like very very dominant in the regular mm -hmm. season they could you know they could have a hiccup players might not have been practicing or training as hard as they probably should have in preparation of the startup and you know if somebody if one of their main players is not not up to snuff <laughs> that that could yeah. be something huge or I personally think as they test more, because now I think they said, Woj said today that they were the league testing for uh, the, the virus is going to happen today. So I think we're going to see a lot more cases, spite, like a lot more players coming out saying that they, they have uh, the virus. So well, yeah. that would be an interesting thing that we really can't predict and we really can't bet on. So Yeah, it's a possibility. Um 
I had a thought and I lost it. I can't remember what it was. Oh, <laughs> uh, we were talking about, you know, coming out of the break, you know, and, and like, I, I always thought this might benefit some of the older players. Um, and some of the younger players that aren't used to playing in the playoffs, especially some of the rookies that are used to, uh, you know, like a college season. Um, I know it's more of a rookie wall in the NFL, but I don't know how much of an effect that would have had in the NBA also. So, but, but some, some teams got a chance to get healthy. Uh, Portland got healthy. So yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Port, I wouldn't, yeah, Portland could, Damn. I think Portland's going to be the uh, AC or Dan better. Lillard is an absolute madman in the playoffs. So <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. If Portland got in there, where's my dog fussing at? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm excited for basketball to be back. I'm excited for sure. Excited for baseball to be back. Um, does anyone, and I'll kind of leave this to chat because this is something you and I wanted to talk about, but if chat's not digging it, then we can pass on it. But does anyone want to hear about soccer? Cause me and <laughs> me and Steve both have been, uh, pretty excited about soccer recently. I've made two or three soccer videos at this point. I think you just made your first one and yeah, man, I've fallen into soccer like a black hole, man. I can't find my way out. There's so yeah. much stuff to learn. It's, it's just, just fun so to learn. Much, it. Right. I know my first like couple of days <laughs> getting into it, it was like, Oh man, there is just so many leagues and so many teams and it's just, it, it's huge. But I thought there was a soccer league, man, to be honest. I was like, okay, let's, let's check out the soccer league. And then I'm like, wait a minute. There's, There's like, leagues in every country, pretty much. Pretty and much yeah. Then they all play into another league, like the Champions League. And I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Major League Soccer is pretty much a joke, from what I understand. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's so. that's something true. Uh, so that's something fair too. Um, what happens if all of these, you know, Major League Sports? get started and then there's no finish to the seasons, which is a very real possibility. Mm. Um, what does that do to the price of the cards? Um, I mean, who knows? Right. But I think it, it could definitely, I think it could definitely hurt the prices for sure, especially of some of the more risky picks. You know, if you're, if you're banking on guys having good playoff series or banking on guys just being in the playoffs and being relevant and talked about on ESPN and stuff, the prices are probably going to get hurt. If there's like a crazy outbreak in the NBA and they have to shut it down two weeks in, that's going to affect the prices. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Everybody. I mean, it affected the prices when it, it was announced that the playoffs were going to pick back up. So it definitely affect the prices if yeah. they had to stop again. Um, and it didn't really affect the market when they stopped the first time after maybe like a two week period because everybody was at home and had nothing to do because everybody was out of work. And they were just sitting on eBay right. buying cards all day. Um, but now uh, you got a lot of people back to work. So if it was a second shutdown without the masses of people sitting at home, I could see it hurting the market this time. Oh, definitely. And you know, who knows what's going to happen with all that as, you know, fall and winter come back. Um, I'm really nervous that, especially that baseball is going to get kind of, you know, stopped because October, you know, is, is kind of the time where the playoffs will be starting up or at least hopefully finishing up. And then mm -hmm. football too. Football is right in the thick of the winter. So when you have to think about basketball, the season, they plan on the season being over in September, and the season would restart in December. You're talking about no downtime between the 1920 season to the into the 2021 yeah. season. They've talked about pushing it to January just so some people could get some rest. But even if it pushes to January, that's still not that long. You're, there, there's not much downtime going to happen between the seasons. So if they weren't able to squeeze this in, this season just would be a wash pretty much. I don't think they would be able to finish it because they have to start the new season shortly after. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. So it may not hurt the cards that much unless a shutdown actually led into the start of the 2021 season. You know, if they said, hey, we got to cut the playoffs right now, but you're still talking about only a couple months from starting a brand new season that wouldn't be postponed, then I could see it not affecting the market. But I guess it would all depend on how late, you know, how long it would be a shutdown for again. 
Yeah. No, I definitely agree. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm nervous about it because, uh, you know, I, 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 I typically, my strategy when buying cards is to go mostly for long term, which is why I mostly put money into baseball. But for some of my short term stuff, it could get blown up. Is that noir? Somebody, no, this is um, Obsidian Soccer. Oh, okay. 1920, they're talking about it in the chat. Oh. Somebody said, buy a box of this and don't open it. I got a sealed box right here. Yeah, in terms of sealed product, I, I personally haven't been able to find any retail, like literally any, but none of my targets or Walmarts have literally anything other than basically Series 1 tops baseball. <laughs> and some heritage, but other than that, I haven't been able to find anything. A um, buddy of mine today sent me a photo. He was at Target uh, not far from here, and he had about eight Bowman Mega Boxes. Whew. So I was like, hey, I mean, I know the price on the blasters and stuff has kind of come back down to where, you, you know, secondary market is the same as retail if you can find them. But the Mega Boxes is the one thing that's still holding a little bit more value on the secondary market. Yeah. I think you're guaranteed, you're probably guaranteed auto or something in there. <laughs> Everybody's telling you to not open that <laughs> box. You know, when I, when I bought it, I didn't intend on opening it because I, I wasn't in the soccer at all. So I wouldn't even have known if I pulled anything good out of it. So I just bought it to stash. And it, it, originally, um, it just popped up on Panini Direct one day after it had been sold out. And I was like, wow, this how this come back and I bought it. And after I bought it, it was immediately sold out again. So I was like, score, I got a box. I guess I'll put this one away. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. Yeah. We are approaching the hour mark, which I usually try to keep these about an hour long. Um, if anybody in chat has any last second topics or questions, let, let us know. Cause we're about to call it a, call it a cast. So, Sapphire I'm Bowman. Towards 500. What's that? I am working towards 500. Yeah, yeah. Everybody go, go uh, subscribe to Flipping Steve. His uh, channel, he's, he's growing crazily fast. He's probably going to pass me sooner than later. Um, no, no, that's not going to, that's not going to happen. If I start to catch up with you, I'm going to tell people to stop subscribing. <laughs> I'm like, stop uh, subscribing. I can't pass my boy. But um, no, I mean, we're both growing pretty, pretty well. I've been, uh, you know, obviously checking my analytics every day. But, um, you know, you, you're getting like 10 a day, I think, or something close to it. Yeah, I'm hoping but, by July 4th to have 500. I threw down the challenge. So, yeah, he's got a uh, he's yeah. got some really awesome uh, giveaway. If you want to go for it. Yeah, if we hit. I was originally going to do it by the end of the month. And then I was like, you know what? The video is not going to release until tomorrow. So I'll make it July 1st. And I was like, you know what? Make it July 4th. I'm going to give away a box of uh, 1920 uh, Revolution Basketball Chinese New Year. So, Absolutely. you know, it's not one of the higher end products, but anytime you can get some NBA stuff. And if you pull some of that Chinese New Year stuff, you know, it's not bad. So, yeah, if we hit 500 by July 4th, then I'm going to draw a name and send it out to you. Just that simple. If, if not, then I'll stash it for another day or maybe I'll open it up on camera and show everybody what they missed out on. Who knows? <laughs> Just kidding. I'll send it to Alex to open it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we'll have to do a big live stream. Uh, Sapphire Bowman. I did not get any. Um, I know it just went on sale recently. Um, it's a, I mean, it's a great product. It's beautiful. Um, I know series two is coming out pretty soon as well. Top series two. I'm excited about that. T Mac rookie tops. What do you think about T Mac to uh, tops? You know, rookies? Um, during oh, go for it. During Tracy McGrady's uh, tenure, I mean, I know he was great when he played. I know he was injured quite a bit. That was kind of during the era when I was kind of out of the sport a little bit, especially the NBA. Like I, I, I stuck with the NFL forever. Um, I lost interest in the NBA for a while. I, I have some team at cards at SGC because they have value. Um, to be honest, I don't, I, I would have to look up, I would have to Google him and actually see what his accolades are. You know, I don't know what he has as far as 
any MVPs or I just know he was a, uh, an electrifying player and exciting, but I don't know. I, I, I So honestly, I couldn't give you an opinion just because I don't like to speak on stuff that I so, haven't researched. So here we got, he's a hall of famer with seven all-stars and seven all NBA two time scoring champion. And he was the most improved player in 2000, 2001. Um, so no MVP, but he is a hall of famer. I, I don't know. Not, he's one of those guys that does a lot of scoring, but didn't necessarily win any titles. Um, yeah. I wouldn't want to met. I mean, I'm not a big Carmelo Anthony fan, so I don't want to say, is he kind of like a Carmelo? Um, even Iverson, but, uh, so really, yeah, you know, as a kid, I love T-Mac. Yeah, I know he was exciting. Like, he could dunk and shoot yeah. threes, and he was, like, a super exciting player, but I do know he often had some uh, bad injuries, I think, too, bounced around a couple yeah. times. Yeah, at the end of his career, or even, shoot, halfway through his career, he started getting injury prone and kind of wheels fell off. I just think, personally, there are better, probably better investments um, than him, but... I mean, I always say invest in who you believe in and who you like. And obviously, T Mac's career is over with. So, it's, yeah, that stat lines are never changing. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, I see um, a comment where it says Canada loves him. Maybe he has a big market in Canada. I think Vince Carter does also. And yeah, I, I, know, uh, I know my boy Pascal does too. So, never forgive T Mac for leaving Toronto. Um, Glaber or Tatis? Oof. Uh, probably Tatis. Tatis' you know, OPS is – it's like 1,100 or some nonsense. Like, Okay, if you're asking me who the better player is going to be, I'm going to go with Tatis. He's going to be electric. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's going to hit for power average. He's going to steal bases. He's just going to be – he's going to be exciting. Um, Glaber is a Yankee. So when you're talking <laughs> about – when you're talking about – uh. You know, investing in stuff, you got to take the market into account. Because um, look at Manny Machado; he's a great player. He got sent out there to San Diego, and nobody wants to touch his cards. Um, he sold better in Baltimore than he did in San Diego. That's sad. So, you always got to take that into a, into account when you're talking about anybody is the market that they're in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's true. I definitely think Tatis is the better player, but yeah, Yankees are. Man, it's hard to it's hard to compete with Yankees in terms of collectability. Um, Polar Blair or Vladdy? Jesus, you guys are coming in hot with me. <laughs> um, I, I, I like both of them. I've been buying both of them. Um, Polar Bears prices are a little bit lower, obviously for PSA tens. Um, so, who who knows, man? They're so young. They're so uh, young. It's hard to tell. I like Vladdy a lot, though. I like Vladdy a lot. Yeah, so so the polar bear is in the Mets in New York. He's got that going for him, but he hit 50 home runs as a rookie, which <laughs> means if he comes out and hits 40 home runs next year, people are going to look at it as a bad season. I'm sorry. They're just yep. going to look at it. You know, it's like putting out a great album as a band and then having to put out your second album and live up to it. Um, and Vladdy, you know, struggled a little bit, so – we're still talking about Vladdy and he hasn't even had a great season. Imagine when he gets his first great season under his belt, what's going to happen to his cards. Sure. Uh, the fact that he's also a second generation player like Tatis also, however, their fathers had slightly different careers. I know you're uh, on Tatis senior. You liked him. He says with the Cardinals, he had some grand slams there, but, but Vladdy senior was just a monster. And you know, that, yeah, you know, that's a lot of the hype for Vladdy junior is built into his father. He has some big shoes to fill. The thing is, is that if he doesn't play like his father, then again, he's going to be an upset as well, and that's tough to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I still believe – I know everybody was kind of down on Vladdy just because – Vladdy Jr. just because he did kind of get outsigned there at the end by Bo, <laughs> which, you know, both are great. I don't think it's a one or another. That's one thing too. It, you know, everybody always says this guy or this guy. My question is, why not both? Yeah, right. You know? And I like Bo too, but okay, to defend Vladdy, they wouldn't pitch to him. They weren't pitching to him from opening day or from when he got called up. They were not throwing him strikes. 
Um, he's more patient than his dad at the plate. He doesn't swing and he doesn't hit home runs. His out of the dad dirt. didn't give a damn. He yeah, his dad hit home runs on <laughs> out of the dirt. But um, yeah, he's he's more patient at the plate, so that's good. His hard hit ball ratio is crazy. Uh, he'll hit screamers, but they'll, he'll hit them directly at an outfielder. Right. So, you know, every now and then, if he gets a little bit more elevation on the ball, he's going to hit the ball out of the park more. Um, and a couple of those line drives, if they find a hole instead of a glove, you know, you're looking at the difference between batting 270 and batting 290. Yeah, no, definitely. I So Supercrop says – Pete Alonso was an yeah, he's 25. So he was definitely an older rookie. Yeah. Um, which may that's or may not have, him, but, you know. what's that? That's been another knock on him, but I don't tend to like yeah, I, I don't, that's, yeah, I don't. I was about to say that's may or may not even matter because if he has six seasons of hitting 50 plus home runs, like yeah, he's still gonna reach like five, six hundred home runs and be a Hall of Famer. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> that's what I mean. If you if you hit 50 home runs, I don't care how old you are. <laughs> Yeah. Uh Freddie Freeman, Justin, I definitely under I definitely agree. Freddie Freeman. Oh. Uh he's the best first baseman in baseball. It's and it I don't think it's close. Um he's definitely undervalued, I would say. I have to look at his prices, but as of about a month ago, whenever I was looking into him, his prices are for sure undervalued. Um he, uh he goes back to how I was talking about Justin Turner, only he also has the stats. He's that yeah. gritty ball player. If you're a Braves fan, you absolutely love him. But he has the stats, you know, the big stats. Justin Turner is the hard-nosed ball player with the mediocre stats, where Freeman is the hard-nosed ball player that you love as a ball player, but he also has the stats. I don't, I don't know if it's because he's overshadowed by Acuna or what it is. You know, Atlanta is a great market, so there's enough room out there to buy multiple players. And, you you know, you even have Ozzy Albies and guys coming on out there. So I love Ozzy Albies. That big team man. just needs to be in the, uh, the 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 big spotlight. If that team got to the World Series and everybody saw Freddie Freeman, it, it would be over for his cards, man. You you better yeah. hope you have them already. Definitely, and I think that them, the Dodgers, and yeah, you could even say the Yankees. Those three teams, like I think, they are primed to win a World Series. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, guys, I think uh, we're went over about an hour here. I appreciate everybody for participating. I appreciate everybody who watched the live stream. Y'all are amazing. Everybody who hit that like button. Freeman is vanilla. <laughs> that might be, but <laughs> that's yeah. That's the point though, right? Is like I think if he could get into the spotlight and show his skills. Cause that's one thing about yeah. baseball players, especially like you think about Mike Trout, dude's the best player maybe ever, right? And because he's so soft spoken and doesn't really go out on social media and stuff. Um, but you know, it's just funny. Um, but yeah, everybody, thank you. If you're watching this after the fact, make sure to hit that subscribe button, join the team and get in that comment section. And of course, like it to let uh, YouTube know that this is value content. Shout out to flipping Steve. I will leave a link to his uh, channel in the description. So make sure to go subscribe to him. He's posting new content two or three times a week. You're really getting them out there nowadays. Oh, man, I'm back to work. It's killing me, but I'm trying to get at least one out every two days, maybe every other day, but Ooh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, everybody, go go follow him. He's got an awesome giveaway going on. Um, I just eclipsed 1,500 subscribers, so I do have a giveaway coming up. That'll be awesome. probably my next video, so make sure to check that out. That'll be uh, tomorrow, so Thursday. And, yeah, everybody, if you're listening to this on the podcast, thank you. Uh, for listening and if you guys dig the content and want to help support it head on over to patreon.com slash less alex check out the perks but mostly it's just a fun way to help support my content keep me doing this every single day but uh until next time keep cracking packs keep collecting and i will see you in the next one